1972 Olympic Games. For the first time in more than 50 years, the sport of archery was entered in Olympic competition. Among the entries from the United States, the archer on the right was a young man who had captured most of the world archery titles. His name is John Williams. John Williams set some new world records in Munich, taking the top awards in the men's division, and brought the Olympic gold medal home to America. We dedicate this film to John Williams, and to the John Williams of the future, who bring such honor to our sport and to our country. John Williams and Jim Clone, both members of the AMF Wing Archery Advisory Staff, are visiting at the home of Big Game Bowhunter Bob Lee. Bob Lee is president and founder of the Wing Archery Division of AMF. These three archery champions will pass along some of the basic shooting tips that have brought them international fame. Jim Clone has gained recognition and respect from archers the world over by twice capturing the International Indoor Championship and coaching the 1973 Canadian World Archery Team. The bow is one of the oldest tools known to men, dating back several thousand years. Originally a means of food supply and a weapon of war, the modern generation has revived the bow as an instrument of pleasure, sport, and competition. School equipment, or equipment for the beginning archer, is not nearly as complicated as this competition equipment being used by John and Jim. A large selection of bows are available for the students. Unlike many sports, which are limited by team size or physical stature or ability, archery equipment can be enjoyed by the entire student body. Jim and John will be using this equipment to demonstrate the seven basic steps to shooting the bow. A short arm guard on the forearm is usually sufficient. But longer arm guards are available if the string should strike the student's arm above the elbow. Finger tabs are also needed to protect the fingers from the pressure of the bowstring. Ground quivers may be used to hold the arrows at the shooting line, or belt quivers which allow the archer to move around during shooting. The first consideration in choosing a bow is to determine the student's master or dominant eye. A simple test is to have the student stand facing the target and extend the index finger at arm's length. Now with both eyes open, point at the center of the target. Now, alternately, close one eye at a time. The finger will appear to jump from the center of the target to one side. If the finger stays on the target, 
with the right eye open and the left eye closed, the student will shoot a right-handed bow. If the finger stays on the target with the left eye open and the right eye closed, the archer will shoot a left-handed bow. Another determination is the selection of arrows. The arrows should correspond to the archer's draw length. At full draw, a target arrow should come even with the face of the bow. A bow stringer should always be used to brace the bow. The bow stringer is simply a heavy cord with leather pockets attached to the end. The small pocket is placed on the top limb of the bow and the large pocket on the bottom limb. Stringing the bow then becomes a simple operation of placing the foot on the cord and raising the handle of the bow until the bow string can slide into the knot at the end of the upper limb. The bow string must also have a definite point mark so the arrow will be placed on the string in the same position for each shot. This point is called the knocking point. A bow square is used to locate the proper position of the knocking point. The knocking point is then pressed firmly into place. Using the arrow to measure the needed gap, a second knot can be located just below the arrow. The arrow can now be placed on the string in the same position each time and will not slide up and down the string as the archer draws the bow. There are seven basic steps in the proper shooting form of archery. These steps are stance, knocking the arrow, bow hand position, bow arm position, draw and anchor, aim, release, and follow through. There are also two styles of shooting the bow, instinctive and freestyle. Jim will demonstrate the instinctive form of shooting. The arrow is aimed by mentally recalling the relationship of the bow, string, arrow, and target for any shooting distance and is the style preferred by most bow hunters. Let's watch closely now as Jim covers the seven basic steps. Steps number one and two are stance and knocking the arrow. The stance is comfortable, balanced, and relaxed. The feet are firmly placed on the ground with the legs open about the same distance as the width of the archer's shoulders. An acceptable alternate is the open stance, where the archer places one foot about one shoe length ahead of the other foot. The bow should be held in an upright position while knocking the arrow to avoid interfering with other archers on a close shooting line. The tip of the arrow is placed on the arrow rest. Then the knock is pulled back with the thumb and forefinger. The third step is the bow hand position. The bow is held lightly with the handle resting comfortably in the V formed by the index finger and the thumb. Step four is the bow arm position. The bow arm is extended straight from the shoulder. The pressure of the bow in shooting places the draw weight in a straight line with the bone structure. 
With some archers, it may be necessary to roll the arm down at the elbow to move the forearm out of the path of the bowstring. The fifth step in preparing to shoot the bow is the draw and anchor. The draw is started by placing the three middle fingers on the bowstring. The bowstring will rest in the first joints of the fingers and form a hook. The index finger above the arrow and the middle and ring fingers below the arrow. The back of the hand is straight. The draw continues as the string is pulled back to a reference point touching the face. This reference point is called an anchor. The sixth step is aiming. Your sight picture will be similar to this. When the archer is close to the target, the tip of the arrow will be seen at the bottom or below the target. The aim is adjusted by moving the bow arm until the proper sight picture is obtained. At intermediate ranges, the tip of the arrow will rise on the target face as the shooting distance increases. At long distances, the tip of the arrow will be seen on or above the center of the target. The seventh and final step in the shooting form of archery is the release and follow through. As the pressure of the bow is released, the released hand will move straight back along the neck to the follow through position. This position is held until after the arrow has reached the target. In the freestyle form of shooting, a sight is added to the bow as a reference point. Let's watch John Williams demonstrate the freestyle form of shooting. The first four basic steps are the same. Stance, arrow knocking, bow hand position, bow arm position. The finger position on the string and the draw are unchanged. But the anchor point is usually changed to obtain more shooting distance in the sight picture. The chin and nose are lowered to contact the string directly in front of the eye. The freestyle archer reads the face of the target and makes corrections by adjusting the sight pin. If the arrows are striking the target low, the sight pin is lowered. If the arrows are striking the target high, the sight pin is raised. The pin is always moved in the same direction the arrows are striking the target away from the center. If the arrows are hitting the target to the left or to the right, the sight pin is moved out or moved in to make the necessary correction. The release and follow through are the same for freestyle and in synchronous shooting. The seven basic steps in shooting form of archery are stance, knocking the arrow, bow hand position, bow arm position, draw and anchor, aim, release, and follow through. Let's look at some of the more common mistakes encountered in the seven steps to archery. Some archers allow the hips to sway or move forward. The stance must be firm. The arrows should be handled firmly and positioned on the strings in a positive manner.
the bow should fit loosely in the bow hand. A tight grip might torque the bow and throw the limbs out of alignment with the string and eyes. The bow will settle into a natural position as the string is pulled back. The fingers need only to prevent the bow from falling upon release. Upon drawing, the pressure flows from the bow hand straight through the wrist and straight on to the shoulder. If the student archer has difficulty in rolling the forearm out of the calf of the bowstring, the problem can usually be corrected by having the archer hold the bow at arm's length, fold the arm at the elbow until the bow arm touches the chest, then straighten the arm to the shooting position. This will rotate the elbow down and out of the path of the bowstring. Another common problem is the arrow falling from the arrow rest during the draw. This is caused by a cut or bow in the hand or by pinching the arrow between the fingers. The fingers should not apply pressure on the arrow as the string is drawn back. Most of the draw should be with the middle finger. The index finger can actually be removed from the string at full draw. Pinching the arrow can also cause the arrow to rise off the arrow rest. The draw is made with the muscles of the back, not the arm. Notice the form, a straight line from the tip of the arrow to the release arm, the back muscles holding the force of the bow. This form will be held until the arrow has been released and has reached target. When aiming, the string should come directly in front of the eye. The archer should look directly through the string and over the tip of the arrow. As this demonstration shows, the archer can look directly over the tip of the arrow, but if the draw is not anchored directly in front of the eye, the arrow will not be pointing at the target. John demonstrates a bad or flip release. Plunking the string at the moment of release will throw the arrow out of alignment with the target. To correct a flip release, place an arrow in the fold of the elbow. The arrow should not fall during the release or follow through. The string must be released by relaxing the fingers, not by flipping the hand. Planting or leaning the bow to the right will cause the arrow to fly to the right. Planting or leaning the bow to the left will cause the arrow to fly to the left of target. The bow should be held perpendicular. Sweeping or allowing the arrow to ease forward at full draw will cause the arrow to hit low on the target. You must have good back tension for each shot. Relaxing before the release reduces the bow's power to catch the arrow. There are many other reasons for right and left or high and low arrows, such as 
allowing the bow arm to move with the release, dropping the bow arm as the arrow leaves the bow, relaxing as you release, leaning into the shot, or break away from the follow-through position as the arrow is shot. Other causes are peeking or moving the head, then an attempt to watch the flight of the arrow. Follow-through is important. These are just a few of the more common errors. Archery is a sport of self-discipline, and each individual's ability to master his own technique. James Dickey is an American poet, author in archery. Speaking of archery, James Dickey has said, I like the idea that a bow is not a machine, but a kind of primitive instrument. You see the flight of the arrow, which to me is the prettiest thing in sport. The arc of the arrow is almost unbearably beautiful. It gives the illusion of predestination. It seems to be following a string right to the place where you want it to go. That's you going out there. That's you making that flight. There's a marvelous complexity to archery. With the mechanics of a bow, an arrow, a string, with the physical complexity of your bow hand, bow arm, drawing hand, anchor, release. But if you keep it simple in your own mind, don't let the elements run away with you. It all ends with a surprisingly beautiful amount of simplicity. The simple shooting of an arrow. The beginning archer will find many avenues to travel with the sport of archery. Disciplined archers will find competition in local, state, and national tournaments. Your goal may become the open ranks of the professional archers who compete for money. And a few, like John Williams, will set their sights on the Olympic gold medal. James Dickey said, I like to come to a certain level of competency. A level that gives me satisfaction and lets the game be fun. Archery can be a social sport, new acquaintances, new friends. Or a weekend family sport. Dickey said, you know, I've never been to an archery game that has not been in the most beautiful area available. Archery has brought new dimensions to the sport of hunting and the sport of fishing. And the sportsmen have accepted the challenge of the bow. Archery is a sport adaptable to a lifetime of enjoyment. And we welcome you to the sport of archery.